Mike Grossenbach, Product Specialist for Distributed Products at Mitsutoyo America Corporation. Uh, today I'm joined by Dakota Pollitt, who is a CNC machining student in the Chicago area. Hey guys. And we get a lot of questions at Mitsutoyo concerning inside measurement, inside diameter measurement, and ID gauges. There's a lot of different gauges out there uh, depending on your application, uh, accuracy requirements, and budget. And all these choices can get overwhelming. So today we're going to give a little bit of insight on the different types of gauges with a focus on two contact style gauges uh, in hopes of eliminating some of this confusion. And today we're going to talk about uh, an overview of how they work, the setup, and the usage of these types of gauges. So the first gauge we'll talk about are telescoping gauges. Um, so I assumed you've used these before? Yeah, so this is actually my personal set that I use in class. Oh, perfect. All right, so basically what these are, um, they're two contacts that are spring-loaded, so you can put it down into the bore in an inside diameter, and then once you've picked up the diameter, you can lock it down with this nut that's set into the handle. So, for example, how would you use this to measure a cylindrical bore like this? First, I kind of go in at an angle, and then I rock it back and forth until I kind of feel it grab, mm -hmm. and then I lock it down. Okay. And one of the things to check with this is after you've locked it down, swing it back and forth again to make sure that you've picked up uh, the actual diameter. If you feel it catching, then that means that you probably locked it down at a far, false large reading, so you're not reading, you're not measuring the actual diameter of the, of the bore. And after that, we're going to take it to our micrometer and measure the telescoping gauge. So here you're going to measure it in different places and make sure that you're picking the, the maximum reading of this, um, of this bar as it's being set in the micrometer. If you're measuring something that's smaller, if it's at a slight angle, you're going to get a smaller dimension, which is going to be inaccurately small. So our teacher told us to do it three times, then get the average. So I'll do it a second time. Okay. So these are fairly common gauges too. They're um, in a lot of different shops. They're really inexpensive. And after you've taken it out, measured a bore, you measure the, the telescoping gauge with a micrometer, which every machine shop is gonna have. It's a good idea to do it three times just because it is a little bit tricky. There's a little bit more feel to it. So when you're making sure that you're picking up the ID measurement of the bore. Yeah, so we added eight uh, ten thousandths on this one. Eight tenths higher, okay. So, and as you're seeing here too, there's a lot of potential sources of error with these. Uh, there's no live reading when you're putting it into the inside diameter. So you do have to put it down get a feeling for it, lock it down and measure it. And because it doesn't have a live reading, uh, you do have to measure it and verify your measurement. And the gauge is also then measured by a micrometer, which is another source of error in itself. And it's slightly difficult to, to line up the telescoping gauge between the contact surfaces of the micrometer. Um, if you don't have it perfectly lined up, again, you're going to get a false small reading on the, the telescoping gauge. Is there a more accurate way to measure other than the telescoping gauge? Absolutely. The next step up would probably be the dial bore gauge. Uh, have you used one of these before? I have not. What makes it different than the telescoping gauges? Um, well, basically what this is, um, it's a comparison gauge with, on the head, you've got a solid or fixed anvil and a spring-loaded anvil that translates the motion up through the bore gauge to the dial indicator that's located at the top. Uh, there's also a spring-loaded um, centering mechanism here, which tends to center itself in the bore. Uh, and normally these would be set up with a master part or a setting ring or a micrometer or even a bore gauge setting tool. One reason why it's better is that you can actually see the minimum reading being picked up on the dial face um, and it's easy to get a feeling for where the actual diameter is in the bore. So let's go ahead and set this up. All right. So we've set our micrometer to our nominal which in this case is 3.07. So when you're setting up between the, the faces, again, you've got these two spherical faces on the bore gauge and the two flat faces on the micrometer. So you're going to want to make sure that once they're placed in between the faces, that you do a sweep back and forth to make sure that you're picking up the minimum reading. And then also twist the head back and forth to make sure that after you've picked up the min reading one dimension, you've, you're picking up the minimum reading in the other as well. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and measure this bore here then. All right, so I'm kind of doing it similar to the telescoping yep. gauge. Similar to telescoping, yeah. So you're gonna put the gauge in, swing it back and forth, 
and see what the, the minimum reading on the dial face is. So it's on the eighth graduation. Okay, on the eighth graduation. So this is a one tenth graduation indicator. So eight graduations would equate to then eight ten thousandths of an eight inch. Eight ten thousandths of an inch. And it's on the plus side of the, uh, of the zero point. So comparison type gauge zeroed out eight tenths high. So that means that you'll add that onto the nominal of what you set it up with. So it'll be 3.0708 inches for the actual bore diameter. Let's say we wanted to see the out of round of the bore to see if there was any ovality to it, for example. So let's go ahead and if we put it in and now rotate it about 90 degrees as, an, as a sample from where we previously measured it and then take another measurement of the bore. Yeah, so this one is at nine ten thousandths this time. Okay, so it's nine ten thousandths. So this would give, since this is one ten thousandths different from our previous measurement, there's about one tenth um, out of round for this bore. So this was definitely easier to use. Um, is there anything else I should be kind of looking for while using it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is still a bit subjective um, because you do have to look at the minimum reading on the dial display. So different operators could look at that a little bit differently. Uh, one could see eight tenths, one could see nine tenths, or that it's in between. There is also a little bit of parallax error between the needle and the dial face. Um, and also the grads could be misread. This is a one tenths graduation indicator, but for example, if you had a five tenths graduation indicator, if you read five graduations on that, wrote down five tenths, actually that was two and a half thou uh, of variance between those. Also, it's a mechanical gauge, uh, so the data off of this would need to be written down and maybe typed in later, uh, which also introduces transcription errors. So how do you overcome some of the challenges we face with the dial indicator? Absolutely. Uh, one way of doing that would be to use a digital indicator. Uh, this one specifically is designed for bore gauges. So what's nice about it is it has uh, three presets and it also has a minimum hold mode. So once it's in the bore gauge, um, you can put it down in the bore, hit the start button and sweep it and it'll automatically pick up the diameter of the part. It also has a tolerance uh, mode where you can at a glance see if it's in or out of spec, high or low, and it has output. So if you wanted to send the data to a computer, you could do that wired or wirelessly. So let's start by setting this up in a setting ring. Right. So you put it in, hit the start button, and then sweep it by the diameter. After it's picked up that minimum reading, go ahead and help hold down the preset button for a couple seconds. And we've already entered the preset value of the setting ring, which is 3.00025. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now the bore gauge is set up. It has the setting ring value automatically assigned to that minimum reading or bore gauge reading. So now we're ready to, to measure the bore. So we'll put it in, measure as normal. Go ahead and hit the start button to start it off. Okay. You'll sweep it by the peak value. I notice that it has the same analog bar as the dial indicator. Exactly. So it'll still give you a visual representation just like a dial indicator. So it also helps with the feeling of the gauge. So you showed me a couple different styles of the two point gauges. Are there any other different types? Yep, absolutely. There's also the three contact style, uh, which have three pins and a head. These are a direct reading type gauge. They also have a longer stroke than a typical bore gauge. And these are typically used for tighter tolerances and they tend to seat themselves in the bore um, with just uh, minor positioning. There are two types of these gauges, the mic head style, as well as the spring loaded style. They use the same measuring heads, uh, but the boromatic is nice because you can use it in different orientations. It's very quick. So if you wanted to take a measurement here, you can also rotate the face to measure in a different orientation. Some people though do still prefer the micrometer head style because of stability. Okay, so why don't you try this out on this bore and measure this. All right. So you see that he's positioned it in the bore and with minimal repositioning, he's already measuring the inside diameter. Thanks Mike, I learned a lot today. If people have questions or suggestions for future videos, what should they do? For questions and suggestions, use the comments below or to schedule a demo, call 888-MITSUTOYO or go to mitsutoyo.com.